I'm Thor. Welcome to the Dragon Ship. For today's message, gentlemen, I'm going to talk a little bit about reconditioning yourself so that you can live the dream. And what do I mean by recondition yourself? Well, as all of us have grown up in society, particularly where I've come from and many of you out there that are listening, and that's Western society, Western American society, we are conditioned. We're conditioned as children, uh, both by techniques called operant conditioning and by social conditioning. So that we're good little boys, we get pats on the head, and we are a proactive, safe member of society and contribute. That's what we're taught. And for the most part, there's a lot of good that comes from that. And um, it helps societies grow and move forward for certain. However, it does also tear societies down. And I'll use examples of that. I'm going to talk about your conditioning as a man and as an individual. And then society's conditioning as a whole is somewhat different than what they teach us in school and why they teach us to be good little boys and go to work, get a job, get married, settle down and contribute to society. There's nothing intrinsically wrong with that. In fact, it's good. You just still need as a man to be able to behave like a man, act like a man and operate in that environment freely. And in today's society, you are restricted. What they discovered years ago was something called operant conditioning. One of the most famous uh, researchers in this was B.F. Skinner. B.F. Skinner realized his research with dogs is that you could train them with rewards and with punishments, and it worked perfectly with people as well. In fact, it is used in schools. There's rewards, there's punishments. If you do well, you get the gold star. If you do bad, back in the day, you'd get the paddle. Or worse yet, you get social distancing. And that's part of social conditioning as well, is to isolate and distance from the group. It goes all the way back to when we were quite tribal. And if you were pushed out of the group, it meant certain death. And uh, it kept everybody sticking together in the herd. And that offered quite a bit of protection. Totally understand that. Works well. Today, we just need to recognize where we're at in that tribe and whether it's good for us. We need to be quite selfish. I would think, in order to be successful in society today. Doesn't mean we abandon them or that we even push back. We just need to be aware of what has been done to us psychologically and then recondition ourselves for success and ultimately to be able to exercise power within the society so that we can live the dream every effing day. So operant, operant conditioning has been utilized on us in our schools to teach us also education, what they want us to know, and how to fit into society. I'm going to share my screen right now. So bear with me, and I'll just read you the definition and why you should recondition yourself. I'll get to it at the very end. Uh, all right, here we go. Okay, so here we are. We're going to share... Make sure we're doing this right. Yep. Okay. Opera conditioning. Here you go. Opera conditioning, sometimes referred to as instrumental conditioning, is a method of learning uh, that employs rewards and punishments for behavior. Uh, throughout opera conditioning, an associate is made between behavior and a consequence, whether it is negative or positive. That's the most simple terms, and it works wonderfully well. This works very well on just about every occasion. There are different types that have been um, put down, but examples of reinforcement is what they, positive reinforcement is uh, homework completion. You can see where a student tends to complete it, they get rewarded. Either it's something as simple as candy, or maybe it's a praise, or you get rewarded for cleaning your room, maybe you get your uh, allowance. This is at a young age, and of course, this conditioning is carried through the rest of our lives uh, in corporate America, promotions, uh, recognition of a job well done. Uh, public recognition is very powerful as part of social conditioning. Uh, and then ultimately, if you are paid well enough, that is the uh, biggest uh, incentive or 
uh, condition of opera conditioning to to get that reward is quite well, especially if you have a rewarding career and it's something you enjoy doing. Um, so let's get to social conditioning. So social conditioning. This is interesting because social conditioning um, is the sociological process of training individuals in a society to act or respond in a manner generally approved by society in general and in peer groups within society. I would like to use, you know, it's been used by parents, religion, school, and society. It's a little bit different, but it still uses social pressure as the reward and the punishment. In particular, have everybody that was raised in America, in so-called Christian evangelical uh, religions, will will recognize the following conditioning phrase that's been foisted upon us for uh the last, I don't know, 40 years. Has everybody heard the term happy wife, good life? That's been put on us by religion, right? Uh, is that really true? Or should it be pick a good wife and have a great life? Well, there you go. You know, you should you should always lead and not necessarily follow social conditioning. It could lead you down a very destructive path. Um, uh, and I'll get into that in later videos, uh, about marriage and, uh, how to pick a wife. Uh, that's where I put a lot of my effort with my, um, courses on long-term relationships and sustainability back to reconditioning yourself. Look, you're responsible for asking some questions, you know, uh, and the questions you need to ask yourself, what do I benefit from social conditioning around me today? Today, I'm pounded with lots of media, giving a lot of messages that are laden with agendas, agendas for politics, which I don't want to delve into. There's too much of that because it, it fosters division, uh, and division is tribalism. Very powerful. It, it definitely, when tribalism is engaged to that degree that it is today, you are conditioned to spend money. You are conditioned to induce hatred in yourself and thereby even actions uh, in your speech, in, in, in where you go and what you do. Uh, they use fear uh, with social conditioning and opera conditioning to get you to do things you would never do if you were not afraid. This is why you need to be aware of what is being done to you with social media and with mainstream media, even in corporate culture and even with your peers. Nobody wants to be on the out. So even if you have very, very good friends and they don't want to be out socially, they, they will um, punish you if you're on the outside or they will ridicule you or bully you in some circumstances. So to break free of social conditionings, what you need to do is explore and challenge yourself to be in the moment and ask the question, am I creating a framework to be my own point, my own point of mental origin? And does society allow me to do that? And if it doesn't, then you need to ask the question, why is it not allowing me to be my own mental point of origin? Am I free to do what I want? If I do what I want, will it hurt others? If the answer is yes, then yes. Then that type of conditioning keeps society on track and not complete anarchy. Uh, I think it's well overdone. You can look at any of the Marxist countries today and you can see people severely oppressed, all in the name of equity and equality. And uh, it's just a fundamental misunderstanding of what equity and equality is. And it's draped in power, in the hiding of power for a certain class of people. It has never worked out. It's very popular because it makes everybody think that the playing field is level. When in reality, playing field has never, ever been uh, level. So you can break your conditioning by exploring new things, asking new questions, and keeping yourself in the moment. Don't be afraid of what's to come tomorrow. Take a risk. Enjoy your life. Don't worry about what happened in the past. Look forward to the future, but don't dwell upon it because you're afraid of a law that might be passed or who, how you might look bad, you know. Now, you should have some caution moving into the future. You're not going to jump out in traffic. 
to explore your new possibilities. Heavens, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being a responsible human being, taking control of your life and reconditioning yourself so that every day you wake up, you feel like you're living the dream because things are going your way no matter what has happened. Um, so that's just a brief message I wanted to give you guys. And in closing of this particular message, I want to leave you with something, an old Viking saying. And this is, has something to do with it. And it is, you know, only believe half of what you read and only believe nearly nothing of what you see. Think about that for a minute. You're so easily tricked. You're so easily moved by social media, by video, by special effects, heck, by illusionists that can have you look at one hand here while they're doing something over here. Be aware and be somewhat a little bit cynical on all things with a positive attitude. This will keep most of the most of the grifters away from you. Most of the people that are going to condition you to sell things to you. Once again, opera conditioning and social conditioning is used to sell things to you and to extract money from you. Look at what's happened with young women. Young women go to college some 67% more than men right now. They're promised a job and they're promised a future. And it can be anything they want when the reality of the situation is they come out of university and they barely make a living wage. And not only that, they're saddled with essentially a mortgage for the rest of their life that they cannot pay to come out of college and owe hundreds of thousands of dollars. And most of the degrees that are being issued, you can't really be what you want to be. And yet we have conditioned our young women, that this is the way to go. It's very sad uh, because if we were conditioning them to do what they wanted, what you know, to be anything they wanted to be, we would give them much better information than we do today. And there is an agenda behind this, and it's huge. The money that can be made off of women is is staggering. They spend nearly two thirds of the money that's made out there. Um, so that is a huge demographic that was recognized by banks, by corporations. And what, what better way than to send them to school, saddle them with debt, put them in a cube <laughs> instead of doing what they're naturally wanting to do, which is have a family and be with their children, take a large portion of their life and carve that out for work in a cube as a cube slave, and then tell them once they're successful, Prince Charming will come and rescue them. And oh, by the way, he'll be much more qualified than she is, so she'll feel good about it. Probably a bad message. They need reconditioning. And if they're going to be reconditioned, then as men, we should recondition ourselves and take care of the situation. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing this. Ah. Uh, and I'm going to give you a link. I'm going to share again a link. Uh, and it's going to be back to, I'm going to send you guys to this website right here. In the description of this video, I'm going to give you breaking the shackles of social conditioning. It's, it's really much more detailed than what I just said. I was kind of all over the place with what I was throwing out there, but it's going to teach you how you can recognize when somebody is using social conditioning on you, uh, when the robots are coming at you um, in order to extract something for you. Yes. Question everything. Why? Perfect. It's beautiful. So it's not so much to rebel against authority, and accept, but it is to accept responsibility for your life. Those folks that came before us did a lot of good, but they're not responsible for our life or do they owe us anything? And we really don't owe them anything except to live a good life. So kind of interesting. Uh, oh, I had another one I wanted to quote you. So even though, you know, social and opera conditioning is out there, I want to show you some social conditioning from the Bible that came from years and years ago. And it is, uh, it would be frowned upon in today's circles. Bible verses about disrespectful wife. Now, there may be some truth here, and uh, pay attention. So, Proverbs 21, 19, it is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. 
It's probably true. Uh, and these were all written in the Bible to keep society moving forward in a positive manner at that time. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh ashamed is as rottenness in his bones. Wives, submit unto your husbands as unto the Lord. Proverbs 21, uh, 9, it is better to dwell in a corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman in a wide house. Uh, and it says, every wise woman buildeth her house, but foolishly pluck it down with her hands. I mean, there's a lot here. The Bible was all about social conditioning, and it worked. It, yeah, society has built itself up, not just this religion or the Bible, but all religions did build societies about power, control of people. Uh, and to control people, they use tricks like operant conditioning and social conditioning. What I'm telling my Dragon Ship members is rise above it and recognize it. When it's to your advantage, use it. When it's not, be aware of it and sidestep it. So with that, I'm going to close out this week's message, and I will be posting another message next week for you guys. And the following week, we will be having our meeting. So until then... I'll see you guys next time.